Hi everyone, I am Ishan Sharma. This is a special video for all of you people out there who are trying to learn to code. One of the hottest sectors of software development is blockchain development. And in this video, I want to talk about the best opportunities in this space. Why is there such a huge demand for blockchain developers out there? How can you learn about blockchain development exactly? What exact resources to use? And if you watch this video till the very end, I'll talk about a great way for you to practice blockchain development without you needing to have an extra hardware. You can do it all on your Chrome browser itself without the need of anything else. Make sure that you watch till the end, hit the like button and subscribe and let's get into this video. So today I'm talking with Mehul Mohan to see exactly what's happening in the blockchain development ecosystem. Mehul, how are you there? And tell us a little bit about the developments happening in this space. First of all, thank you so much, Shan, for having me. Blockchain, I believe, is a very interesting space, especially in today's time with blockchain and Web3 and all these startups raising a lot of money and putting in into the infrastructure structure into the software layer so i do believe as a programmer it's a great time to be in the space because not only it's growing but it's growing very rapidly and you are rewarded in proportion to what these companies are raising which is a lot awesome bro so like what is like the salary that that these startups are offering to blockchain developers both for like full-time roles freelance as well as you know like just consulting opportunities because like I have a friend of mine who's working in Facebook and he gets paid like $250 per hour for consulting these particular startups who want to build their own platforms in the Web3 space. So tell me your experience and sort of what salaries are people getting in this space? Yeah, like I said, I mean, Web3 is a hot space in which a lot of VCs have a lot of attention. Therefore, they are putting in the money and that money eventually is going to people who are working in those companies. So if you're working in a Web3 startup, the average salary, the average ticket size, is anywhere between 150 to 170 thousand US dollars, which is you might think that this is only applicable for US jobs or tier one countries. But the interesting thing about Web3 itself is that a lot of companies are not only just willing to go for remote, but that's the whole spirit of Web3 that you can sit in India and you can work for a company in US and you know you're doing the decentralization work, you're creating their own smart contracts, their own infrastructure, and you will be paid in that amount. So, I mean, the average salary like i discussed you can see it's basically around 160k but it goes as up to as much up to a million dollar including all the coins offering and everything so i mean definitely there is a lot of money to be made in web3 especially by developers and programmers because this is a space where a lot of development is actively happening it's not like everything is done layers are being worked on protocols are being worked on a lot of technology stack is being built as we speak amazing bro so one uh, very important question people ask is whenever they're learning about, whenever they're trying to learn about blockchain development is what are the prerequisites, right? Both in terms of devices that they need to maybe get or just in terms of technology that they need to learn, right? So sort of tell us about the important things that they need to know before jumping into blockchain development. And uh, yeah, that's what a lot of people want to know about. Uh, that's a, that's an interesting question and a lot of people I have met think that they have to do something differently when it comes to blockchain. But fundamentally, the way I see blockchain is as a immutable database at, at its very core value where you have to build certain pieces of software which interact with that database in a special way. So the fundamentals of computer science still remain the same. You have to learn a programming language. You have to learn about functions, variables, methods, how to deploy it and so on. The only difference is how you work with the tech stack itself. So for example, in case of Web2, the way this works is that you create a website, you create a server, you upload it, that is your deployment phase and then you share the link with other people. The way Web3 works is pretty similar if you are coming from that background. You create something in, as a smart contract in Solidity, you deploy it on the blockchain and you let other people interact with your code using a wallet. So, I mean, the fundamentals remain same. And if you have strong basics in any other field, it will be a cakewalk for you to actually understand and relate to how the Web3 ecosystem works. But yeah, I mean, I do believe that just like any other tech stack you want to learn, whether that's mobile application development, web development, data science, you need a programming language in this case, which is Solidity for Web3. And you need to know certain best practices around how you deploy your things to production. What does a day in the life of a blockchain developer look like? Let's just say what sort of task will they be doing when they are working in a blockchain startup or in a, in a Web3 startup, for example? I mean, 
just like we discussed in the earlier question, you see there is a lot of analogy between web development, web 2 and web 3 in a way of how things work. The only difference, like I said, is your practices would change. So instead of, let's say, an SDK which you use for web 2, like, you know, some framework like Express or Node, you probably would be working with something like Third Web, for example. Third Web is a company which came out with these SDKs for developing NFTs and smart contracts. For example, Polygon is also an interesting solution. So the way you work, the technologies you work will change. But one thing which will remain same on a day-to-day -day basis is that you obviously have to learn about how to code that particular thing using the syntax of that language. You have to learn about what the build tools are, the deployment tools are. And sometimes, at least in Web3 case, you might also have to build these tools yourself. You would have to build these pipelines and build these processes. And who knows, like, I mean, you might be able to create some standardized solution for Web3 because there's a lot of things, a lot of infrastructure, a lot of software layer is still being actively developed. So it's not just about bringing applications to the market, but it's also about bringing the dev tooling to the market, which makes it a really interesting space because as developers, we feel like people people are like us feel like just developing something, right? If you even develop something which is around dev tooling itself, that opens doors for you because we need tools today to make building tools and building apps for Web3 easier. You talked about solidity. How can someone actually start learning solidity from the scratch, right? Like just starting out, making your first smart contract. How can that be done in the easiest way possible? That's a great question and something I have also been receiving a lot of queries on that how do we actually get started with Web3? Because it's one thing to say that you want to be a Web3 developer and it's another thing to actually execute on that path. So for that, we at Codam, you know, we have been working hard on the full stack learning path. But from the last couple of months and so, we have also been building Web3 learning path on CodeDAM where we start with the Ethereum fundamentals, the blockchain fundamentals, because like I said over and over again, the basics remain same in basically every, everything you do in computer science and in, you know programming, but you build on top of those things. So with Web3 also, we start with Ethereum fundamentals in this new course which we have at CodeDAM and there's a special offer for that. So make sure you stay tuned till the end. This new course takes you from the basics of Ethereum and blockchain and how to work with Solidity all the way building your smart contracts right within the browser. So one of the things which um, I have also received as a query is that what are some requirements or what are some specifications I need on my system to run the Solidity compiler and blockchain and how to work with them. The good thing about taking up a course like this on CodeDAM is just not, not the videos part, but also the playgrounds which you get to practice building this stuff. Because when you are learning about Solidity, you should actually be actively building stuff around that, whether that's an NFT, whether that's a smart contract, and deploy it on testnet, even mainnet if you have a little bit of money to spare, and actually learn by doing. And that's what we do in this mini course, in this first course, which you're offering right now at 85% off. Thanks to Ishans, this video, who is um, taking, helping us with this initiative of educating a lot of people on the Web3 front. So I do believe the best way of learning blockchain and learning Solidity today is learning by doing, by learning Solidity and then actively deploying smart contracts with it. ERC20 token stuff and learning about all the stuff by doing. And the best way to do that today is through CodeDAM, the CodeDAM's Web3 learning path. The first two courses are out, which go in depth of how to work with Ethereum and Solidity and smart contracts and testing them. And we are offering the first course to begin with for 85% off just for this video on Ishan's special link, which you can see in the description. Go take a look at the link in the description to sign up for the course. By the way, bro, how is this better than the free courses available on YouTube? How is this better than the Ethereum uh, free code camp course that is available out there? People ask that question a lot in the comment section, so I was just curious. That's that's definitely a fair question, and I do believe that um, whatever we do, it should be valuable to others. So first thing, um, like I mentioned a lot, if you have been into programming space, you know the importance of doing, because you can consume a lot of content but until and unless you're putting it into some sort of execution form some sort of project some sort of lab some sort of practice things to do you are not gonna learn right whenever you apply for a job application they take your interview as a, as a basic starting point right where you have to do something they don't let you just recite a few things the whole model of code dam is built on top of that when you are taking this course like i said in the last question as well you will actually be building stuff 
And I'm not talking about following the instructor. Once you have covered the knowledge to actually build this stuff, you will be thrown into a little bit of deep end and you have to build this stuff on your own. Of course, you have help, you have the community part, you can see the solution. But at the end of the day, it is you who is practicing. It is you who is building that muscle memory. Also, one thing which you are actively working on at the moment is helping you get jobs in the relevant fields once you complete a learning path. So imagine that you're taking up a Web3 learning path on Codam. You start by learning. You build a few things right within the browser. You deploy them on, you know, testnet and blockchains available around and you build your proof of work as you are completing the course. We monitor your progress and we create a profile for you, which then you can apply directly to people who are hiring, right? To companies who are hiring via Codam. So imagine a world where you just come on Codam, you get a pro membership or a course like this, you go through the learning path and you get your dream job within a single click. So that's a future which we are building, learning by doing practically, and then also helping you land your dream job with the best company you can find. I think that that is actually really important. As you were talking about learning by actually practicing code, how can someone practice building smart contracts and uh, what platform can they start using for the same? So one thing which we have built at Codam is a Solidity Playground for you, which is also something which powers the labs in the course, which you just saw. And this playground allows you to build the smart contract right within the browser, deploy it with this UI on the screen you can see, and just connect your MetaMask wallet and see the transactions happening in real time. I believe this is the best way to learn programming and learn to code online because it avoids all the hassles of setting up a Solidity compiler, avoiding the installation errors and deploying it with a single click and whenever you want to come back to this environment you just have a code damn playground link to visit so that is how people can start practicing building smart contracts how can someone find opportunities in this field you know because it feels a little puzzled someone who's just getting started might be overwhelmed by all of the responses all the different technology so how can they navigate and how can they find opportunities for themselves in this space i think one of the first things you have to do as a developer which you also have to do in other fields is instill confidence within yourself that you bring value to the table right so the first thing you have to do is make sure that you are good enough as a web3 developer and you have cracked some practical applications and you have done a few things which you are confident with once you have done that, it becomes easier because at least in Web3 front, the reason that there's a huge amount of salary given is because obviously the supply and demand are, are at a mismatch, right? So if you are a good enough developer, you will get a good paying job on Web3 uh, front. But the way you explore these jobs, like I mentioned, code damn jobs is one of the things which you're working that could be useful. Other than that, Twitter is a goldmine for you to approach these startup founders directly, which are working in the Web3 space. Just hit them up with your resume or the things you have built, your code damn profile, the, the proof of work basically you have done and set up a call with them, they would be more than willing to get you on board if you're a good enough developer. Now to find opportunities, you can also use platforms like Gitcoin as well as the VC job boards. So what happens is that all of these blockchain projects get funded by venture capitalist firms and all of these firms also have their own job boards in which all the job vacancies of these startups that they have invested into are listed over there so for example you have y combinator job board you can apply for all the y combinator funded startups from that place itself so go take a look at that gitcoin all is obviously a great place for you to get started we have also covered gitcoin in a separate video so i'll link that video in the description if you want to check that out that is all for this video thank you so much for watching this is your chance to learn about blockchain development by taking use of the solidity course on code dam for just 399 after the 85 percent discount go take a look at the link in the description and sign up for this and start your journey in blockchain development if you have any questions about how to get started you can put them in the comment section down below and i would be happy to answer those as well thank you so much i will see you in the next video you can share this video with your friends you can tag me on social at shansharma790 thanks a lot i'll see you in the next one